Hey Reddit, what are some of your small town WTF stories? I'll start. I was an EMT for a small company. One of our trucks hit a deer in a neighboring jurisdiction. Argument ensued about who got to keep the deer. Man on M throws cash register a store clerk. After pursuit that ends when he is captured on the roof of the bowling alley. He ends up in the hospital for having broken an ankle running. Tiny emergency room means he is placed in one of the two neighboring beds. The other being occupied by the store clerk. Hilarity ensues. I got a parking ticket for $5 for blocking a sidewalk. When I didn't pay it in time they added on a $2 late fee. In Jefferson City, Mo, the tickets are $3. Lobbyists visiting from bigger cities are said to skip on paying the meter and frame the tickets in their offices. High school classmate brought a school decaying human skull he found on his farm. He wasn't sure what it was. It came from a man who'd been murdered in the winter, then stuffed into a drainage tube on this guy's farm. When spring came, thawing snow and rain washed the remains out into the clearing where he found the skull. My hometown once had its major roads shut down because a rafter of wild turkeys decided to hang out in the street for a day. Why do I get the feeling you like telling this story just because you get to say the phrase rafter of turkeys? I lived next to a farm in Silo City. NC. One day as a kid I walked down the road to explore under the bridge on my road. To my surprise, I found a bag full of rotten cow carcasses. I grew up in Flagstaff, Arizona in the 80s. As a kid, one of my favorite places to go with my father was Ruff's Guns and Liquor. And it was exactly what it sounds like, a combination gun and liquor store. I thought that gun porn liquor stores were a common thing. Maybe I live in redneck land. I once lived in a small town in the Appalachians and I have a story somewhat similar to yours. The town was too small to support any kind of hospital, but they had a diner that functioned as both the local watering hole and the doctor's office. The doctor owned the place and also served as the main cook. You could sit at the bar next to someone and not know if they were getting something to eat or if they were about to get inoculated. This town was very very small and remote. The schoolhouse I went to is the smallest public school in that state by a long shot. To the senior class, this school went K-12, and still only had about 40 kids, not all of them lived in the town. Did a family tree project and discovered that they were all related, not even distantly. It was like third cousin or something. The punchline. They still held prom. Also, our neighbor who lived somewhat close as the crow flies, bit about 45 minutes driving through mountains. Gave my mom her old wood fired range because she had just been hooked up with electricity and didn't need it anymore. Keep in mind that this was the mid 90s. I have too many stories about that place and the crazy folks who live there. I didn't think any towns like that still existed, but they're out there. They're kind of like time capsules. This gives me hope that Twin Peaks is out there somewhere. I remember we had this old guy we called the gum man. He would hang out in the local Piggly Wiggly, a grocery store, all day and ask little kids if they had gone to church that week. If you told him you had he'd give you a piece of gum. It was only later in life that I found out that he wouldn't give any gum to black kids, only white. After typing this all out I realize how creepy the whole thing actually was. My rural Washington state town was one of those little pockets of bigotry that people forget exist in the northwest. We had precisely one Jewish family for a while but they moved away soon after an elementary school teacher told one of their little girls that she and her family had killed Jesus. We also had exactly one black police officer, out of around four total, who was constantly treated terribly and assigned to crap work until they finally fired him for no good reason. There's still a lawsuit pending about that, I believe, and in both of these instances, Someone wrote an anonymous letter to the local paper saying that the buttholes involved represented the silent majority of the town. We also had the typical hillbilly M problem. That made headlines when our sole 3 unit apartment complex blew up in the middle of our minuscule downtown area. Then there was the time that the local pagan family decided to do a midnight ritual on a railroad bridge and they all got hit by a train. You can imagine what the silent majority thought about that business. On top of all that. Our high school mascot was a potato, we had a dog run for mayor, and Lewis and Clark mention us in their journals as the place where they got a particularly crappy night's sleep.
I can't be the only one that's cracking up at the image of a high school pep rally full of young kids cheering on the hometown potatoes. Small town in central southern ill. A man's horse died and he hadn't yet taken it to the dump. Some drunk rednecks got together about a week after it died and decided they should take it instead. They tied it behind their truck and started dragging it to the dump, but decided it would be more fun to drag it around the square a few times. Was fine until the skin tore and it started leaking horse fluid and parts all over the pavement. Small town in CO. Our dog died while we were away and the vet didn't have a fridge big enough for it. We wanted to bury him at home. So he went into the fridge of the local restaurant for a few days. Dad says it was really hard to dig the hole because the dog was near frozen with his legs all sticking straight out and he had to make it bigger than usual. <laughs> my hometown has an endless supply of these stories. Every spring my hometown has a livestock festival. A week long celebration of livestock. One lucky high school girl is crowned the livestock queen and presides over the festivities. A prestigious position to be sure. During the livestock week tickets are sold to an event called Cow Patty Bingo in which an indoor showroom is divided into over a hundred small squares and a cow is released onto the floor. If you are lucky enough to have the cow crap into the square you had chosen, you my friend are a winner. My high school tried that. The cheerleaders chased it all over the place. It was so frightened of the 30 odd random screaming girls, it attacked one, and then promptly busted down the gates and fled. That was the last time my HS tried that. I was 16, hanging out on the roof of a local establishment, because what the frick else are you gonna do in a small town America, and a cop in uniform, who was drinking, offered me a beer. 25 now and still occasionally get ID'd, so it's not like I've ever looked older than I am. I went to a field party in WV after bailing my buddy out of jail for DUI. When we got to the party, his arresting officer was there and they drank a beer together. Later the cops brought out boxing gloves so they could box some people at the party. A DUI in WV was $500 fine. I grew up in Memphis but I used to go to this really small town in Arkansas a couple weekends a month. I got a bowl cut with an actual bowl on my head by a barber with three fingers on one hand. My neighbor was known to bring in junkies and one of them was a rage addict. Well this guy disappeared and after about 3 weeks a smell started coming from one of my neighbor's numerous camp trailers in his yard. They checked it out and the dude was dead in there. The autopsy reported that he had heart failure due to injecting pine sap because he ran out of age. I have a lot more stories. I grew up in a town of less than 500. Who knew pine sap was so deadly? I was hanging out with my grandma's neighbor's two grandkids, Wes, the boy, wanted to go back in the bush. We lived in a rural area, and so his grandmother let him take me and his sister down the back road on an ATV. We were back there barely 10 minutes before we came across the most horrible stench I've ever smelled. Wes drove towards the smell, and we found a cow graveyard. There were 25 plus dead cows in various states of decay. Wes's sister said she was going to throw up so we left. Not really that WTF, but I was quite young and had nightmares about zombie cows for months. Griery Irons. We had this local crazy lady. Everybody called her Crazy Tina. She was fricked. Apparently at one time she was a normal person and had a family and everything. And then she started doing a bunch of drugs and kind of lost it. But man, some of the stuff she did. Crazy. She had a garden in her front yard, which sounds normal. But she was growing rubber boots. Yeah, she had planted like 20 or so rubber boots with just the tops hanging out. And she had another 30 or so just in a huge pile. It's been there for as long as I can remember. She decided one day that she was going to paint her house. Which again sounds kind of normal. Except instead of doing it like a normal person. She bought a can of spray paint. And instead of spray painting like a normal person to try to get even coverage. She just freaking sprayed it all over. That led to more people going up to her house and spray painting dongs and crap on it. Then I guess she got tired of that so she ripped off like half of her siding. Not all of it, no, just half. And she was the only person in the entire town to have bars on her windows. I don't really live in a town where people put bars on their windows. She is literally the only person here who has done that. And man, you ever walk down the street she lives on. Holy crap. She'd be yelling get the frick away from my house and then you'd have to run away from her and everything. She was nuts. 
She was like that crazy cat lady from Simpsons, but she had no cats. And yeah, apparently she was once a completely normal and nice person. My mom went to school with her. Then something just went off in her brain and she was never the same again. And then, knowing that every living creature on this earth dies alone, she ends up living as a recluse after writing a weird book titled The Philosophy of Time Travel. My brother's university is in a town that is pretty much literally in a cornfield. The instructions on the school's website literally say turn left at the stop sign, because there is only one in the entire town. Maybe not a true WTF story, but my favorite my hometown is so small country story is that at our county fair there was a girl in my high school class that was a finalist in both the beauty pageant and the arm wrestling tournament. Also, I was buying beer in a very small town in central Oregon. It was just a store gas station on a state highway. As a young looking 21 year old, I carried my passport with me because I figured it was better and more believable it, I got carded and handed him my passport, he said, I asked for it, not a book. You can always tell when the seasons change in my town by a man named Leon who walks everywhere, he is an older Indian, Native American, man with long dark hair, when it starts to warm up, every year without fail, he starts to wear his cut off Jean shorts, his legs are always shaved and he oils them down. He completes his look with a button-up Hawaiian shirt, a safari hat, and kids. That's a Maleficio on Advis mod material right there. An oldish lady I'd say around 50s, who was clearly two sandwiches short of a picnic used to walk around the town all day every day with her dog, and just muttering things to herself. Her dog died, whilst she was walking it, but she did notice and spent most of that day dragging a dog around the village until someone felt the need to mention it. Pretty sad. Also I never saw her again much after that. That dog is dead. No no. Just resting. I lived in a medium sized town in Endy as a kid. One day in the summer. About 9 months after hunting season. My buddy and I were walking around a man made pond in our neighborhood. As we were checking out the pond we noticed a small stick with what looked like a string tied around it floating on the water. Being 12 we naturally had to have that stick. After a few minutes trying to fish it out we nabbed it and started tugging. Something kind of heavy was attached to the string, so we kept pulling out of curiosity. Within seconds we had it and pulled up a semi-decomposed buck head, with the antlers still attached. The fur had fallen away so all we saw was bloated discolored flesh and no eyes. My buddy and I shared a look over what we'd found, neither having a clue how the heck it had gotten there. We poked at it with sticks, as 12 year old males do. For a while then got bored and left. The next day we came back with more friends to examine our find. The stick and head were gone. The reason the buck head was tied to the rope and put in water was to let the flesh decompose. Hunters will do this to keep their trophy in a European style mount. Oh man. From what I've read so far, this might be a little heavy. But it is small town. And it is WTF for sure. While I was in high school we had a religion teacher. I went to Catholic school, who was a deacon. The deacon had two children who also attended the school. I was a freshman, his daughter was in my class, and his son was in my two sisters class. It was pretty well known that the deacon was sleeping with a student. So well known that the mother of the girl he was sleeping with kicked her daughter out of the house. For sleeping with the deacon. So get this, the girl moved into the deacon's house with his family, wife included. So this was going on for a long time. At least two years. There were random stories of them being caught fricking in a classroom after school or something. But no punishment ever came of it. She still lived with the deacon. His kids still went to school with us. He was still our religion teacher. The next day I was taking a test in math class. When the teacher got a note from another teacher. She read it. And then told us to stop what we were doing and listen. She told us that the deacon had been found out. And the police had attempted to arrest him. He had kidnapped the girl he was sleeping with everyone knows she went willingly though, and driven to Canada, where the police had surrounded him in a hotel room. Upon seeing no way out, and his life over, he jumped from the 4th story balcony, and he was in a coma. He died a few days later, now a religion teacher sleeping with a 15 year old student and running to Canada and committing suicide is pretty WTF but it gets worse. So anyways after going to college in another state, I came home to visit once. 
Brining up this story to reminisce, my friends enlightened me to new developments. Apparently, the wife of the deacon had allowed the girl to stay with her family even after all this went down. During that time, the deacon's youngest daughter decided she was a lesbian, and wouldn't you know it, started sleeping with the girl her father had committed suicide over. There's a lot more details to the story, but those are the bigger points. TL. DR. Deacon religion teacher sleeps with 15 year old student, gets found out, runs with her to Canada, commits suicide. 15 year old student ends up in lesbian relationship with Deacon's daughter. Ro, that story has the highest WTF to word ratio I've ever seen. I briefly dated a girl in high school that started boning her ex stepdad and later married him. This guy is 25 years older than her and has a daughter with her mother. So in the end she became her sister's stepmother. Thank god I got out of that relationship early in that crap whole town. Uncle daddy, uncle daddy. I worked on an archaeology crew at a dig outside of a small town. Four of us went into a fast food place and everyone watched us from the time we came in until we left. One woman actually grabbed her child when we walked out. When we got to the parking lot I suddenly started laughing so hard there were tears in my eyes. The guys looked at me like I had lost my mind. I was finally able to explain myself. I told them that I thought the reason why everyone reacted that way to us was because we looked like the beginning to a bad joke. A biker, two hippies, and a one-eyed Korean walk into a restaurant. Awesome, but this is a serious thing in small towns. I visit my dad's hometown every once in a while and people do not stop staring just because they don't know who you are. It's just weird. Especially coming from a pretty big city. Local small tourist town planted some nice little trees around the visitors center downtown. Someone cut the trees down. Took them a week or so to notice. Hey, didn't we used to have trees here? The unknown tree thief continued to slowly take out trees, causing quite the mystery. Then one day after a heavy rain second street flooded, they sent someone down into the storm sewer, who found a beaver dam under the city streets. Animal control managed to live capture the beaver, his dam was destroyed, and he was relocated to the country. He created a nice dam out there, flooding a former field which had been fallow anyway. And then one day the beaver got hit by a car, it was very sad. Less than a month later his dam failed, and two roads were washed out and a community was flooded. TL. DR. Don't mess with mother nature. I once saw a man talk to a quarter wheel of cheese, cheddar. For about 8 hours, arguments, deep conversations, and confessions were had. And sometimes, I could have sworn I heard the cheese talk back. My concern is to why you were watching him for 8 hours. Bunch of dudes in my town decided to pose as de-agents and start raiding drug houses to steal all their money and drugs. Ended up robbing a house that was actually under surveillance by the feds. Oops, busted. In 45 minutes. Westboro Baptist Church is going to be picketing my old high school because it's f infested and pervert run. Three cheers for being a pervert run. Hip hip. In our neighboring village we have a couple which became grandparents at the age 25 stroke 26. Yep, their kids were as fast as they were. My former band used to play at this bar in a little town frequently. One Friday, an attractive young lady asked me to go home with her. So I didn't yada yada yada. The next day, we show up early for Saturday's gig and stop for dinner. One of the bartenders was also there, and he approached me. So, I hear you and Angela are dating now. It hadn't even been 10 hours since I left her place. I replied, I don't think I would call it dating right before our first set. She walks in, slaps me, and walks back out. News travels quickly in small towns. You yada yada over the best part. This'll probably be buried but I'll have a go anyway. A couple of years back I lived in a village with a population of about 2500. You know the kind of village where all the young people move away when they are done in school. No? Ah. Well. So anyway. You get left with all these lonely elderly who just need someone to talk to and so it happened. Fairly frequently. That one of them would suddenly turn to you on the street and start a conversation. Something that would have never happened in my hometown. I remember this one time in particular. An old woman with a small white dog grabbed hold of me and my. Then. Girlfriend. 
cursing those people who break bottles everywhere, creating glass shards that the poor dogs have to walk on. We talked for maybe an hour, about nothing in particular really but me and my girlfriend sensed there was something important this woman really wanted to get off her chest. There was this short hesitation while she looked my girlfriend in the eyes. A tear rolled down the old woman's cheek as she said, I'm so sorry, you look so much like my daughter. At which point it was revealed she had had no one to talk to for the whole year after her daughter had been brutally murdered with an axe in front of this woman's grandchildren. Needless to say I was flabbergasted and so were my girlfriend. So we stayed there, in the blizzard, just talking for as long as we could before our teeth rattled. This was just one occasion, but by far the most memorable, since, you know, murder. I'm just amazed that people care so little for each other that we have thousands upon thousands of elderlies with absolutely no one to talk to. Everyone should have the opportunity to just vent their thoughts and troubles every once in a while. <laughs> Lived in a town of about 250 people until I was 14. Was at the local bowling alley during league night. Walked into the bathroom locker room to find a few older gentlemen holding a huge package filled to the brim with a white substance, which I found out later in life was C. I told my old man this, and he just shook his head, clearly knowing who they were. Apparently everyone knew about them and just didn't give a crap. Just found out recently that the C ring, if you wanna call it that, was busted with 20 or so people involved. TL. DR. Don't fry bacon naked. Alright, so living in a small town you get used to all sorts of stupidity. A high school friend was filling up his truck at the gas station when he realized that he was putting gas in and not diesel. Oh crap, because the gas had already been pumped he had to pay for it and take it. So he ends up siphoning off the gas into 5 gallon pails. So he's got absolutely no use for this gas so what does he decide to do? Burn it. Him and his friends. I wasn't there for it. Get a good flame going around these pails and everything is going good until he gets bored. Well out of boredom and the fact that apparently it isn't happening fast enough for him he decided to kick the pails over. Long story short, the gas splashed on him all over lighting him on fire. He now looks like Freddy Krueger without a fedora. That is so sad. An acquaintance of mine loaded up on Valium and decided it would be a good idea to try and rob the local corner shop using a knife and a baseball bat. So he goes in, hits the cashier on the head with the bat, attempts to pick up the cash register to carry it out but realizes it's too heavy, so he exits quickly. As the police arrive around 10 minutes later he realizes that he's fairly well known in the area, so he wants to get himself an alibi. To do this he strolls back to the shop, which is now full of police, and goes and sits in the hairdresser's next door acting as if he's only just arrived on the scene. He got arrested straight away. I should also mention he was wearing the exact same clothes when he returned to the scene of the crime. Was studying abroad in Ireland and was living in a small town in the west. A local woman was abducted and murdered. Her body was thrown in the ocean and washed ashore a few days later. The really freaked up part was the man who done it. She was his mistress. Lived on the same street as me. I even said hello to him as I passed his house in the week between the murder and when he was arrested. I was sent to Shetland for a general practice attachment for medical school. Shetland's an island 200 miles north of the UK mainland, right in the middle of the North Sea. First week we were there. A group of us were in the pub one evening, when a local comes over to us. He asked my friend, excuse me, are you? By any chance he already knew my friend's name, which confused the heck out of us. This bloke had sent his mum a text message saying there's people I don't recognize in the pub, and his mum was the nurse at my friend's surgery. She described her down the phone, and as we were the only new people on the island that week, it was us, was there for two months, and it only got stranger. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.